Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and welcome to Reset. I'm Sarah Bodley. I'm the executive director here at Reset. And I'd love to tell you just a little bit about the space that you're in. So since 2007, Reset's been a staple in Hartford's entrepreneurial ecosystem. And we are proud to support impact-driven entrepreneurs through our accelerator and our incubator programs. We are proud of the impact that our businesses have had on Connecticut's economy. Over 200 businesses have launched through our programs, and thousands have received services since 2007. Our alumni have generated over $21 million in revenue and over $11 million in capital and support hundreds of jobs here in Connecticut. Our goal is to meet entrepreneurs wherever they are and help them to get to the next level with social or environmental impact as well as financial growth at the forefront. Many of our entrepreneurs come in with big game-changing ideas and really need the extra push to make sure that they're being strategic as they launch and scale. We aim to bring together a community of support around our businesses, including expert mentors, investors, other entrepreneurs, and access to market opportunities. It's really in all of our best interest to make sure that our businesses have the right resources and networks to grow their economic, social, and environmental impact right here in Connecticut. And today's announcement shows a great step towards helping small businesses spend less time navigating the necessary paperwork and filing requirements that can be pretty daunting for a new business, and more time making sure that their business is thriving and giving back to the community. Too often businesses fail because of a lack of networks, capital, or information, and we're aiming to reduce those barriers, especially for underrepresented groups like BIPOC and female entrepreneurs. In 2021, 88% of Reset's teams were led by women or people of color. And we are thrilled to see the state stepping up to help streamline how Connecticut businesses get registered. And we really look forward to seeing the impact of this over time. And if you are building a socially minded business in Connecticut, please reach out. Our applications are open for the next Impact Accelerator. So thank you to Governor Lamont, Secretary of State Denise Merrill. And with this, I'd like to introduce Josh Jafal. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. And, and thank you so much for having us here in this amazing space. It's really um, great to be here this morning to uh, share a major announcement in the, the governor's uh, continuing efforts to um, streamline and modernize state government. And so when he uh, came into office in his first State of the State address, he set out a very bold vision uh, to make Connecticut an all digital state. And we have been hard at work over the last uh, almost three years now uh, doing exactly that and providing services to our businesses and our citizens in the ways that they expect to be able to access them as opposed to having to navigate the alphabet soup of dozens and dozens of state agencies and to try to figure out what they need to do to get help or to be compliant or to, um, in this case, grow their businesses. And so we've been hard at work in a number of areas like health.ct.gov, which is the social services that are available to people to help um, themselves and their families, uh, jobs.ct.gov, which is a wide array of resources available to people looking to upskill their uh, their, uh, their careers and access new job opportunities. Uh, Driving.ct.gov, rather self-explanatory, but uh, I've been making enormous progress moving uh, DMV transactions online. But the first one out of the gates, uh, actually in the summer of 2020 that went live, was business.ct.gov. And that was the, uh, is the one-stop shop uh, for entrepreneurs and, and businesses to go online get immediate access to all of the resources uh, and information that's available here in the state of Connecticut to start a new business uh, or to grow a new business and provide those uh, entrepreneurs with uh, an easy uh, wizard or a checklist that they can answer questions and then progressively they get led through a set of additional questions that results in a checklist at the end where they know exactly what they need to do to start a business, how to do it, we shield them from all of the seams across our state agencies and all of the legal language that they don't need to know about if it's not relevant to their industry that they're starting up in. Um, but what we said back in the summer of 2020 when we launched was we acknowledged that once you had that checklist, now you had to go click out into the other agencies where the transactions actually occurred. So whether that's DRS or DOL or, or DCP, we'll go through these acronyms uh, in a minute, but um, you still had to kind of go out into some very old and clunky legacy systems. And we said that the next frontier was really going to be modernizing all of those systems as well and integrating them 
with this business.ct.gov front door. And so we've been making great progress in that regard. Uh, we had an event, I think, last year with Department of Revenue Services where we announced uh, their new tax system that's coming online with more functionality we're going to be rolling out in the next couple of months. Uh, Department of Labor, we've talked a lot about during the pandemic, and fortunately they are on track to uh, roll out their new modernized uh, systems in the spring. Department of Consumer Protection uh, has done a fantastic job moving online all of the occupational licensing tasks that are required, making those very easy for uh, businesses and individuals to access. But it all starts with businesses in the state of Connecticut with the Secretary of State. Uh, that's where the journey begins if you're starting a new business. You go to the Secretary of State's office to register your business. She's responsible for the business registry, and that's where the journey really begins. And unfortunately, up until this point, uh, the journey started a little bumpy uh, because you would immediately go into a system called Concord. And I have, for my prior life as a CEO of a, a small business here in Connecticut, I have personal experience with the Concord system. And every small business person in the state knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's a system that was went live in 2003. Uh, and it looks and feels like a system that went live in 2003. Um, but uh, we're really pleased to be here today to announce that through tremendous leadership of the secretary and our team at Digital Services, uh, that system has now been sunset. And we have a brand new modern uh, system that is fully integrated with that business.ct.gov uh, website. Uh, so now, once you're done with that checklist and you're ready to actually start your business and go register it, you slide seamlessly right into that workflow. Uh, and behind the scenes, it's the Secretary of State. She still has statutory responsibility for that work. But from an end user perspective, as the entrepreneur, it's just seamless for me. I can just go straight into there, get done what I need to get done, and move on to the next task rather than uh, waste a lot of time uh, navigating our bureaucracy. So. Uh, this uh, announcement hits the, the trifecta of government modernization. So first, it's providing better services uh, to our entrepreneurs and our businesses. It makes it easier for them to start their business, less time, less complexity, uh, and a better first impression, right? A lot of times people are out of state and they're looking at Connecticut. Do I want to move to Connecticut, start a business there? This is our chance to make a first impression, and now that first impression is going to be really positive. Um, the second element of the trifecta is how it helps us internally from a state perspective as well. When you've got good systems like this, we get less questions, right? We get less uh, internal work that we have to do so that the secretary's team can spend more time on the higher value work that can help move the state forward as opposed to manual processes and answering basic questions. And then the third element of the trifecta is the data, right? So the data that goes through these systems is incredibly important, right? This is information about businesses that are being formed in the state of Connecticut, and where are they, and what are they doing? And we have struggled in the past to be able to really get good insights into that data and share those insights with policymakers or economists or others uh, who are tracking the economy and helping us and helping the governor and the legislature understand what we can do to drive growth in the state of Connecticut. So this platform now provides a number of dashboards. We'll get it all up on the open data portal where people can go access that data themselves in real time and see what's going on in the Connecticut economy. So that's really exciting as well. So replacing big old legacy systems like this is very risky, it's very hard, and it doesn't happen without very strong partnership between the technology team and the business team. So I really want to thank and recognize uh, from the technology team, our chief information officer, Mark Raymond, his digital services team, uh, represented here today by Max Geigel, uh, who led the charge. Um, but the business leadership is where it, uh, it has to be led, and that's Secretary Merrill. Uh, her leadership throughout this has been tremendous. Uh, people know our constitutional officers have independence and autonomy. They're under no obligation to partner with the rest of the executive branch, but Secretary Merrill, I remember day one, said, we got to fix this thing, we got to modernize it, and we're going to work together to get it done. And thanks to her leadership, uh, we got it done. And I want to thank and acknowledge Chris Drake, who's here somewhere as well. Uh, who was the real leader on the secretary's team uh, helping to drive this forward uh, without whom this would not have been possible. So um, I want to, it's a perfect segue to introduce uh, the uh, owner of this uh, new fantastic system, Secretary Denise Merrill. <laughs> Thank you so much, Josh. Yes, this, I thought this would be a lot longer coming, so all I can say is it is amazing that we are here today in such an incredibly short period of time. Uh, this is an issue uh, making our 
business services better, more streamlined, and able to do more things online for at least a decade, and probably more. And before me, uh, there were other people that worked on this. So I never thought we would be here today, really a short year later when we started, we launched in June of 2020, uh, and now, uh, as of today, uh, we have had online filings, over 100,000 online filings since June in this new system. And that just shows you the capacity of the system to streamline things and give businesses more time to do the things they should be doing, like running their business. And they don't have to spend time on the bureaucracy of doing filings. Just to give you some idea, 2016 was the first time that you could file online a new business. And at that time, very few people did it. Most people still had to file on paper or come in person to our office. Now within one year, 93% of our filings are now online. And that's amazing progress. I can't say enough about Governor Lamont and his administration uh, making this happen in a streamlined way. And those of you who have been around government for a while know that is not easy. You're talking about a lot of different agencies who have to cooperate, and the leadership does, as Josh says, come from the top. So uh, I couldn't be more delighted that we have managed to make this progress on this very important issue for all the businesses in the state. Uh, we did have one of those clunky old legacy systems, and to have that transformed in such a short time is, is truly almost miraculous in my book. Uh, so uh, we're hopeful that this will really improve the lives of all the people running businesses, particularly small businesses in the state, that don't have access to a lot of professional help when it comes to doing things like filing paperwork that you have to file every year and getting assistance from us, because now we're gonna be able to provide that assistance and not just sit in the back room filing paper all day long. Uh, it's also allowed me to streamline my office. Uh, we have far fewer need for all those clerical staff that used to have to file thousands and thousands of paper, uh, pieces of paper every year. Uh, so this is tremendous progress. I am so grateful to Josh and particularly to Governor Lamont for making this a priority because someone has to do that to make something like this happen. And I'm wonderful to be back at Reset. I was here when it was, uh, Reset was downtown, and we first launched the Benef Benefit Corporations Act. Uh, it was, I think, about 2014, yeah. So it's wonderful to see the progress you're making and the things that you're making happen here in Hartford. So thank you for that, Sarah. Anyway, with that, I would like to introduce my friend and colleague, Governor Lamont, who has made all this happen. Thank you. <laughs> hey, and thank you, Denise. And, um, I'll tell you why I was an easy sell, Sarah. I mean, 40 years ago plus, I was one of those guys sitting out there, right, like these folks here at Reset. Um, you got 40 people here following their dream, trying to start up a business, a business that uh, will make an enormous difference. I know Rudin's business is gonna make an enormous difference when it comes to people's homes that have an ownership and an opportunity. And I remember uh, one day I was there, and um, I was, you always respond to these RFPs. The RFPs are always due in a, 48 hours, and um, it said, and uh, provide an original certificate of incorporation. <laughs> you know, I'm going to the file cabinet, no certificate. So um, I called up, you know, one of your distant predecessors, uh, and this is Secretary of State, please leave a message. Okay, God, the bid's due in uh, you know, eight hours. And um, so, so when we started talking with Denise and Josh about how we can move this online, you know, it really resonated because uh, time is money for business. And, uh, and making it easier so you know all the services in and around, um, you know, biz.gov and what that means in terms of starting up your business, what that means in job training, what that means in terms of uh, loans. This is the type of thing you'll be able to um, access off of uh, an online service like this. And then I was at a, um, ribbon cutting for some affordable housing a, uh, a couple of months ago. And the developer was sort of teasing me, but I, I kind of liked what he said. He said, um, you know, when I first uh, met Governor Lamont, uh, he said, you're probably not gonna get as much subsidies as you used to get in years past. This is an affordable housing developer, but you'll get your okay a lot faster. And he said that was right on both fronts, and that was okay with me. 
because able to get those shovels in the ground, able to put that money to work, able to get people housing that much faster is what these online portals are all about. And not only does this make it easier for folks thinking about Connecticut, learning about Connecticut, thinking about locating a business here in Connecticut, now they don't have to go, oh, here's, here's, here's what you do over DEP, and here's DECD, and uh, the alphabet soup. We have sort of um, one place where you can go and get you access to all the needs that you have. And a lot of that is thanks to Denise Merrill's ongoing pursuit of this ever since um, we first were talking about it, probably a decade ago. Yep. And, uh, and here we are. And as Josh alluded to, um, these are just, these are services for business and small business to make it easier for you to do business in the state of Connecticut. But it translates across all of uh, state government. You know, um, here we are at the Thanksgiving time, and uh, you look at the number of folks who have to go to one of the Department of Social Services centers and sign up, whether it's, um, uh, you know, what they used to call food stamps or job training or, um, a Medicaid or the exchange, and everybody had a separate line, and often the separate place you had to go, or then later on a separate website. So the way Josh is transforming this with his amazing team is we're not going to be simply broken down by task, but broken down by you. So we have your profile, we know what the type of services you need, and you'll be able to access all those related services. So let's say, um, uh, you're eligible for utility rate, um, uh, electric rate support coming out of the federal government. Well, that being the case, um, you're probably also eligible for rent relief, so we can put those two together. And if you're also eligible for rent relief, there's a very good chance um, you're eligible for SNAP benefits. So we're trying to make it easier for the business community to work with the state of Connecticut and provide the services we can, trying to make it easier for the um, folks in need, especially in this time of day, uh, make it easier for them to be able to do this. And I'll just leave you with um, one other group that we care a lot about, um, jobs. Uh, we have a lot of jobs that are unfilled right now, and uh, we need you back at work. So we got uh, jobs.ct.gov. Um, it's just in the starting phase. It will be better and better um, you know, over the next six months. But it not only allows you to easily match your skill set with the jobs that are out there, but also match you with the type of job training that's now readily available for you, and match you with a job. And that job can be in the private sector, that job can be in the not-for-profit sector, that job can be in a teaching and healthcare, and we also need you in state government as we think through uh, the number of pending retirements out there. So I'd like to think that this online not only saves the taxpayers a lot of money, it also saves each and every one of you a lot of time, makes it easier for you to access the services you need so you can get a, about your life a lot more efficiently, a lot more effectively, and a little more time at home with your kids. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Well, can someone tell me how much this costs? Hello, Josh. <laughs> remember, Max? Uh, we'll get to the number, Paul. Okay. Yeah. How long will this, what's the service life of this new platform? When might it become a legacy? Great question, Paul. So one of the key changes that uh, we've made under the governor's leadership when it comes to technology broadly is that we have gotten out of the business of developing custom software. So software that's written with code that's just for that one system, and then you're stuck maintaining it and having to deal with it for the future. So what we've pivoted to is using what they call software as a service, or SaaS, which is basically software that's in the cloud we partner with companies that are providing some of the leading platforms in the world. In this case, it's salesforce.com. So they're one of the leading CRM companies in the world. And so what that means is the system's essentially future-proofed. So we get to benefit now through our annual subscription to Salesforce through the billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars, that they spend every year on research and development around new features and functions, around cybersecurity protections of this platform, um, and we get to benefit from all the innovation that they drive through our annual subscription. So we don't have to worry about uh, you know, writing uh, new features and dealing with upgrades. They worry about all that stuff. So that's a big pivot we've made from a technology perspective that helps really future-proof these investments. How much does this annual subscription 
We'll get to that as well. It's a fraction of what we've historically spent to maintain these old legacy systems, though, so it's going to save the state a lot of money. Uh, Pete, you mentioned 100,000 businesses registered online in the last six months. Uh, actually, 100,000 filings, so mo not all formations, but also annual reports, all the different filings people do. How, how does that compare? I mean, what, what, what was like the six months previous to that? I mean, uh, Chris, I don't know, what do you think? So, it, it, the, the, amount of, uh, the amount of business filings has stayed roughly the same as it was in Congress, the percentage that are being done online is significant. So, you, okay. you have like, right. about a Yeah, one five. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you.